Hi, I'm Ian Hartman, Solution Architect at Western Computer. And in this short video, we're going to focus on the landed cost module. Do you need to track purchase orders as goods move from the point that you take ownership to the final destination? Do you need to receive the goods at the overseas dock and again at the warehouse? Do you need to capture different costs along the way? Do you need to record invoices from the merchandise vendor as well as the shipper? Have you created workarounds or even written custom code to handle these challenges? Then the landed cost module might be right for you. So this is my landing page. This is where I normally land and I've created a new tile for landing costs. We're going to be working landed costs. We're going to be working from here. Let's now say that the actual date of the load was completed. Instead of taking one day, they finished it today. So we're going to put in 514. We'll save that. This is going to change to 514. This is now the 13th. And it's scheduled to sail. That's fine. So we're going to get this on the ship. It's currently on the ship right now because if I come to my purchase order and I go back to my landed cost, its last status was confirmed. I just moved it into an actual date that I set it up. So you'll know the goods are now in transit. You can see that. And if I come over to, back out of here, if I look at my on-hand inventory, currently the 250 was sitting for large. None of it was in transit. The only thing I have in transit is small and extra large. So let's go ahead and record the invoice. So we're gonna go back to manage. We're gonna post the invoice. This is the vendor's invoice for the goods. This is where we're actually taking ownership. So the system knows three-way matches in play, but it also understands this is not my final receipt. It also knows that this is what's on order. Of course, like any invoice, I can make changes to it. So the three-way match has not been performed. I'm gonna enter an invoice number here, and an invoice date, and I'm gonna save that and match update receipts. Every time I anchor over that, it brings it up. So now we're passed. I'm going to go ahead and submit it to the workflow. My workflow is a really simple workflow. All it does is ask a couple of questions, so it should be done very quickly. And as you can see, the workflow is completed. It's been through a couple of successful uh, condition and it posted the invoice. So let's get out of here. And let's get out of there. And you'll see now the status is invoiced. If I come back to my purchase order, which is showing up as confirmed and I refresh it, it is now invoiced. And if I go look at my invoice, there is an invoice here. And there are no transactions because nothing has happened regarding any financial transactions as of yet. Now let's go back over to on hand and take a look at where we are there. And now our goods are in transit, our 250. These 250 here are tied to these 250 here, which are physically reserved to that PO. And if we look at the voyage again, let's go back and let's now add the cost of the voyage. So see the fuel surcharge that came in automatically. I'm going to go ahead and create some new charges. Let's put in a fixed freight charge. And we could use quantities, amounts, volumes, weights, measurements. I'm just going to use for the simple purpose of adding this in without having to make it too complicated. A fixed amount of $5,000 and an additional duty of two and a half percent and I will add in insurance and the insurance will be a flat rate also and that will be uh, I don't know 500 bucks okay. not real numbers at all so now we back out of here and if I come and look at my cost inquiry now, it's gonna show me where the cost breaks down. So I'm up to somewhere around $6,400 or so. Okay, 
Very good. So the goods have been invoiced, the costs have been put into the system, and you know that we added the original automatic costs that came in as well. So let's go back and see where we are. We have recorded the vendor, we took ownership, we added the costs, and now we're gonna start tracking it. We're gonna finally receive the goods at the warehouse, and then we're gonna create the shippers invoice. Okay, so the next step now is we added the costs and we did the invoicing. So we're ready to actually go into the voyage itself and start tracking against this. So we could say now that the goods have finished sailing and the invoice was already put into the system for the vendor. And now that the goods are sailing, it's actually gonna take longer than the 24 estimated days. So we're gonna say this came in on the 13th of May. And when I save that, the actual 29 days, this now starts on the 13th. And let's say it came out of customs. Oh, let me show you the status. So the status has now arrived, okay? Next thing is it's gonna go through customs. So let's say it gets through customs at 515. And again, the status is now clear customs. And if we look at our date, the confirmed is 517. And over here, we're at 517. So finally, our last step is it comes out of customs on the 15th, gets on the truck, and we have it in hand, let's say on 560. And that's all we have to do for tracking. Now, that tracking information can come in electronically. It can be entered by hand. It can be uploaded, of course emails, however the communication is, is the way we're going to be able to manage that information as it comes through the system. The next step is going to be to receive the goods at the warehouse. So that's it in a nutshell. If there's anything else that you want to see, I can be reached at ian.hartman at Western Computer. I hope you enjoyed this quick session of landed costs. Thank you for attending. Take care.